second. Uh... How are we doing today? Hmm? I know. This is going great. Um, I feel like it's been forever since I've been here and since I spoke. Um, I feel out of sorts a little bit, but I am very happy and glad to see everybody today. Um, I'm just going to jump into it, and uh, in Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14, Jesus says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Whenever we get on the topic of walking paths and ways, we realize that in life, we're on a journey. And in our lives, our destination, our final destination that we hope to reach and achieve is the kingdom of God, because we're told to seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And we also know that through Jesus' teachings and sayings, that the only way to reach that is through him, because he says in John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. So in this journey, if we truly follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we'll be on the straight and narrow. But if not, if we're off by just a hair, we're going in the wrong direction. It doesn't matter if we take a hard left into sin and transgression or a right, a slight right into tribulation and struggles that make us fear and doubt what God and Jesus are capable of doing in our lives. We know where we want to go, but we struggle to move forward towards it. And I came across this quote, simple and profound, and oddly enough, it came from Winnie the Pooh. And it says, I always get to where I'm going by walking away from where I've been. We know where we want to go, and we know where we have been. We have been in the land of Egypt, in the world. We have been in bondage. Bondage of sin, of fear, doubt, pride, lust, and the list goes on. And again, we know where we want to go, but why do we always find ourselves where we've been? We seem to get ourselves on these roundabouts that always bring us back to where we've been. Things seem to go well, then one little thing goes wrong, and here we are, right back where we started. In Romans 12, if you want to turn over there, a passage that we're all familiar with, but I really want to look at it and pick it apart. Romans 12, starting in verse 1 and going through verse 2. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do not be conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. We cannot conform to the world. And that word conform, I'm not even going to try to say the Greek translation, but the meaning behind it is to fashion alike or to confirm to the same pattern. And that's what we do, whether we realize it or not, when we conform to the world, we do things that make us look like the world, that make us fit into the world. And that separates us from God the Father. When we conform, we're basically playing an imitation game. We imitate the world. And like that last song we just sung, the goal is to let others see Jesus in us, not the world. In James 4, verse 4, it says, Adulterers and adulteresses, 
Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. An enemy of God. Straightforward. If we conform to this world, we are an enemy of God. And that is why we are to transform. And that word transform means to change, transfigure, or transform, or to undergo a metamorphosis. A literal change in us. That is what is supposed to happen. How are we to transform, though, in this world? When we look at the English word transform, it's derived from two words, trans and form. Trans is to across over and form is from. So we have to cross over. When we look at it this way, the breakdown of the word, it leads to a conversion. And we know that conforming opposes God, puts us on the wrong side. So we literally have to cross over from the side of the world to God's side, to the straight and narrow path. We have to make that cross over to that side. And when we do that, it leads us to a completely new way of living our lives, a completely new way to walk each and every day. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, he is a new creation, transformed, for the old things have passed away because we have walked away from where we have been. And behold, all things have become new. A new creation. That is the goal. To undergo that metamorphosis. And the easy example of that is the caterpillar turning into the butterfly. You look at a caterpillar and a butterfly and they look completely different. You see a totally new creature. The one thing that we often overlook, though, is that butterfly, once it undergoes that, can never go back to being a caterpillar. Its old life is gone. It has died. It has passed away. And all things have become new. But we love to go back to the caterpillar. We always love to go back to where we've been because what we don't realize what we're doing sometimes is we're trying to conform to God as opposed to being transformed. But God doesn't want us to conform to him. We can't go around walking around in a butterfly suit, taking it off whenever we feel the need, so that way we can do the sins and transgressions that we want. We can give in to our lusts, our pride, and our fear and doubt. Because God doesn't want our imitation. He wants our transformation. He wants us to transform into a new creature. Turn over to Galatians 5. Galatians 5, verses 19 through 25, it says, Now the works of flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murderers, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Does any of that sound familiar? Does any of that sound like possibly where we have been in this life? Places that we often find ourselves again? Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If we keep going back to where we've been, we will miss the final destination. We will miss the kingdom of God because we are on the wrong path. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit... If we live in it, let us also walk in it. The Holy Spirit is what allows us to be transformed 
by the renewing of our mind. It is what leads to true transformation if we allow it to work. That word renewing means a renovation. And when we look at renovating things, take a house for example, you take out every ugly old thing from that house and you replace it with new. It's out with the old, in with the new. We have to look at our lives, what we hold on to from where we've been, that always leads us back there. From the smallest thing to the biggest of things. Because in God, there is no darkness, only light. And conforming, when we conform, that is something we do to ourselves. But when we are transformed, that is something God and only God alone can do for us and to us. So we cannot hold on to things of the past from where we've been that will constantly lead us back there. We have to make the sacrifices in order to do that. Because as it says, those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We have crucified the flesh. That is the only way we can undergo true transformation. To start closing this up, I want to read a little poem or writing um, by Portia Nelson. And I feel it goes quite well with this. And it says, I walk down the street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I am lost. I am helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault. It still takes me a long time to get out. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. I walk down the same street. There is a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. I walk down another street. The only way we can get away, to walk away from where we've been, and actually truly get to where we're going is through surrender and through sacrifice. We have to cut out the things that take us back to the world, that lead us to sin, transgression, and the tribulation of our heart and our soul. We will face tribulations in the world, but the tribulations of our heart and soul that make us fear and doubt God, we have to cut those out. Anything that takes us back there, we must make that sacrifice. We have to bow before our God, our Father, and allow the love of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to truly transform us into what we're to become, his sons and daughters. In closing, Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with his might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with the fullness of God now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us his Holy Spirit that works in us to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. Amen.